I first started thinking of the idea for this novel um, in June of 2001. There was a big Chagall exhibit at the Jewish Museum in New York City, where I live. And one night at this exhibit, I read about this in the newspaper actually, there was, they had a single cocktail party, um, just an open event for people to come to the museum and, and enjoy and meet other people. And someone walked into this singles cocktail party and walked out with a million dollar painting by Marc Chagall. And when I read this article, I was just kind of amazed um, for all the obvious reasons. But then I also started thinking to myself, what kind of person walks into a singles mixer and then walks out with a million dollar painting instead of someone's phone number? <laughs> and that became the beginning of the character who became the main character in this book. But I became much more interested as I, thought, as I started writing the book and started thinking more about this idea of Chagall and his work. Um, I, I, I started doing a little bit of research and I, I learned more about the circle of, of artists and Yiddish writers with whom Chagall had been involved early in his career. And it raised all kinds of questions for me about what art really, what art means and how one, um, how one determines what's original and what isn't, um, what determines the value of a work of art. And all these questions really kind of came together f um, in the story of the theft of this painting and, and what happens to this painting over the course of several generations of the family in the book. I had started studying Yiddish in, um, in college and I was, I was already, I was doing a doctorate in um, Hebrew and Yiddish literature at the time when I read about this um, theft of the Chagall painting. And at that point I realized that many of the works that I had been studying, um, had, a lot of them had been illustrated by Chagall. He had done a lot of illustrations for um, works of Yiddish poetry that I had read or um, even children's books by authors I knew. And I, I just sort of started wondering how he had known these authors because it was clear he was very intimately tied to this circle of writers. And then that was at that point was when I looked into it and I discovered that one of his first jobs when he was a young man was as an art teacher at one of these orphanages in Russia that had been built for Jewish children who had lost their parents in the pogroms. And when I started looking into that, I saw that he really was part of this um, circle of Jewish writers and artists. And that's something that isn't really known about him. Um, you know, we think of him now, Chagall, as you know, he's obviously achieved this worldwide fame throughout a very long life, uh, most of which was spent in Western Europe and in the United, the United States and later in France. Um, you know, we don't we think of him as originating in Russia, but he's often sort of thought of as a French right, a French artist. Um, but really, so much of his work originated from this group of of Jewish artists and writers with with whom he began his career. What was very important in my family always was um, the tradition of reading and and literature and literary criticism that is very much part of the Jewish uh, religious tradition. Mm -hmm. um, in Judaism, it's um, you know there's a reason why uh, the Jews are called the people of the book. In fact, this is a religion that's based on a book, um, on, on, on the Hebrew Bible, um, and not just on the Hebrew Bible, but on all the commentaries that, that rise out of the Hebrew Bible and that have been added to over the course of centuries. And in this sense, there's, it's sort of a religion in which religion and literature are, are almost the same thing. And as I got older, I became more and more interested in that, in that juxtaposition between between literature and religion. And what it what sort of became of greater interest to me as I got older was this awareness that in the in modern Western culture, there's kind of a divide between um, religion and creative work. They're sort of seen to be as uh, opposing each other in some way, that you know, one either sort of believes something or one has a creative spirit which goes off on its own. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in the Jewish tradition, you see almost the opposite. You see creativity and religion really working off of each other and, and, and being very um, intertwined with each other. Um, especially in, in, in modern Jewish literature, you see that um, playing off of religion all the time in the work, in, the, in, in even what would be considered secular works, there's always sort of an awareness of this religious background of, of even just built into the language. And so that was something that I had from growing up was this, was this real passion for the literature um, and the language of, of Jewish traditions. Um, I was a Torah reader as a child and um, as a teenager, um, which is a, it's a trained thing where you're trained to chant from the Torah in the synagogue. That was something I learned as a, as a, as a child and I did um, you know, as, uh, while I was growing up. Um, so the language of the tradition was always something that was very much a part of my life. Mm -hmm. And when I started um, writing novels, it was something that sort of sort of became part of the novels just very naturally because, um, as I said, this is, this is a, a tradition where religion and literature really are almost the same thing, um, which isn't to say that, that, that literature does the job of promoting uh, uh, religion, uh, quite, often quite the opposite. Often religion is, um, you find uh, modern Jewish books that are very, uh, very much rejecting religion, but in fact, what that, that, even that rejection of religion is in some sense an engagement with it. Um, there's always sort of an ongoing conversation about, about what to believe and why. And um, to me, that's, 
very much what Jewish literature is, is sort of an ongoing um, conversation about what to believe and why. I grew up in a home that was um, very much geared toward creativity. And what I mean by that is um, I'm one of four children, um, and I have, I have two sisters and a brother. And my parents really ran our family as a sort of institution. Um, what I mean by that is that we were always sort of given very um, careful instructions about what to do, when, and how. and um, and these instructions were to do creative projects. So we would come home from school and my mother would say, why don't you guys all write a play and we'll perform it after dinner. And I now, as a, as a parent myself, I now realize the, the strategy of this, yeah. of getting one's kids out of one's hair. <laughs> um, but, in, but in fact, what I, what I see now is that, is that what they really encouraged us to do is to be creative in all things. Um, really, we were always doing these kinds of pr uh, group projects together of, of writing plays, writing songs, writing poems. And in fact, we still do this. We write poems together for people's yeah. birthdays and things like that. Um, and it really was effective, I have to say, because um, now as adults, my two sisters are also published writers. Um, my younger sister uh, just sold her second novel. She published published a first novel a couple years ago. Um, my older sister is a, published as a journalist and is working on a first book. And my brother is, um, he's not a writer, but he's an artist, um, which obviously worked his way into this novel as well. My brother is a, he's a professional artist. He's an animator for television. So uh, it really did, um, in some sense, it really, um, I, I credit my parents with, with encouraging me and my siblings to, to pursue creative, uh, a, a creative way of life. I wouldn't even say a creative career. I'd say a creative way of life and, and approaching life from a creative point of view. Mm -hmm. My siblings absolutely had an influence on this book. Um, one of the major relationships in the novel that that, um, that that becomes very important in the book is the relationship of the the thief, the man who steals the painting, Benjamin Ziskin, to his twin sister Sarah, um, who's an artist and who whose role as an artist becomes very important as the plot progresses in the book. Um, I was very interested in the relationship between adult siblings because I think that this is something that um, it has the potential to be, it doesn't always for many people of course, but it has the potential to be one of the most powerful relationships in one's life because as one gets older there are fewer and fewer people that one that, that, that knew us as children um, and that not only that knew us as children but that can that are still sort of stuck with us as adults, so to speak. Um, not like childhood friends who can wander off and, and, and usually do, but, um, or, or parents who may pass away or, or, or sort of think of us not as adults or not as peers. Um, but people who are our peers who are with us for our whole life and know where we're coming from and in some sense know where we're going. Um, and I think that that has a potential to be a very powerful relationship. And that's why I really wanted to make that the central relationship in the novel. Um, also because so much of the novel is about creative collaboration between peers, whether it's between artists or in this case between siblings. Mm -hmm. um, I my relationship with my siblings is um, considerably less fraught since we're not going around stealing <laughs> paintings. Um, but it's um, it is it is that kind of creative collaboration. Um, as I mentioned, we do we still write poems together and things like that, and um, we do work together. Um, actually, my my one of my one of my sisters who's a novelist, uh, we sometimes give. Uh, characters, uh, our characters cameos in each other's novels. So there'll be a character in this book who, I, there's a couple characters in, in, in the world to come who uh, appear in her book. And, uh, and there's a couple characters in my books that appear in hers. And uh, we sort of do that just for fun. Um, and you know, we work together. We'll sit, sit at the same table and write together. And, uh, and it's, it really is, um, it's, it's a very, and we always read, all of the sisters, we always read each other's works and uh, are offering feedback on each other's work. So it really is, it's a very, it's a very fruitful relationship and I, yeah, I dedicated the book to them. I don't know that there ever can be one message from any book, um, or certainly, uh, hopefully not from a good book. <laughs> from a good book, I hope you have yes. lots of different ways that you can read it and, and lots of different things that you can get it from it and each time you read it. Um, but to me, this, this book is about inheritance. Um, inheritance in every sense of the word. Um, inheritance in terms of physical property. Um, this, the center of the plot of the book, of course, is about this stolen painting and who owns it, whose who's painting does this, is this really, who does it belong to, and why, who deserves to own it, and why. Um, so that's sort of the central conflict of this book is the question of inheritance. But of course, the, the conflict that runs through all the characters' lives throughout the whole story, the historical story and the contemporary story in the book, is the more um, is the deeper question of inheritance, which is you know what do we inherit from our parents, um, not in terms of physical objects, but in terms of who we are, and how many of those things can we control, and how many of those things um, can are we stuck with, um, and how many of those things do we wish we were stuck with, um, and or or and, or lose without without being able to to retain them, and then how many of those things do we pass on to our children, and and are we in a position to pass on to our children? How much can we control the legacy of those who came before us and those who will come after us? Mm -hmm. So I think if there was sort of a message so to speak from the book was that um, 
we perhaps have more control over those things than we think. Um, it's often thought that it's sort of left to fate um, who we are, who our children are going to be. And while we do have, um, there's many things in which that we can't control about our lives. Um, what we can control is how we respond to the, the, the situations that we find ourselves in in our life. And um, there is this, a question of free choice that comes up, free will that comes up in the book repeatedly. And I think that um, the central question of that is, is to respect how much that we have in our past and also to, but to understand that it's up to us to decide what to choose from the past that we want to bring into the future.